Do you know the top 10 foods that you should be hoarding for the end of the world? Hi, I'm Jonathan, the Provident Prepper. We don't know what the future will bring, but we try to be ready for anything that might happen. There is a great deal of peace of mind that comes from knowing that you have a supply of food that will sustain you through anything from a loss of a job to a long-term grid down event. In this video, we will talk about the 10 things that we think you should have in your food supply so that you can take care of your family no matter what. Preppers take steps to prepare for everyday challenges as well as the possibility of devastating apocalyptic events that could catapult our world back to the late 1800s. No power, no natural gas, no running water, no sewer, and no well-stocked grocery store around the corner. Here's our list of the top 10 foods that we think everyone should hoard for the end of the world as we know it. Water storage is important, but it isn't the topic of our video today. Hopefully you've got that well underway. The criteria that we use to establish our top 10 foods are below. These foods could require no special tools to make them edible. They had to be packed with essential nutrients and calorie dense. All of the foods needed to have a 25 to 30 year storage life so that they could just be tucked away and used as an insurance policy for when disaster strikes. Another criteria that we used was if something was difficult or impossible to produce on your own. And to start off our list, let's talk about grains. Grains are better when they're stored in the whole form. Flour is not a good choice for long-term storage because it has already been broken down and will degrade more quickly. These Mylar bags of white flour only have a five-year shelf life and even at five years, the flour was already tasting like the metal in the Mylar bags. A good amount of grain to store per person would be three to 400 pounds for a year supply. Wheat, spelt, kamut, and einkorn are examples of grains that we think would be a good idea to store. We'd much prefer to have a grain grinder to, in order to make flour out of this, but wheat can be edible even without. You can sprout the wheat to increase the nutrients, or you can just boil the wheat and eat it as wheat berries. One thing you might want to consider is that grains such as einkorn are lower in gluten and may be a better alternative for those with gluten intolerance. Oats are an amazingly healthy food. They can be stored as oat groats, steel coat oats, and rolled oats, and they all have a 25 year shelf life. The nice thing about rolled oats is you can put some in a pan with some water and not even cook them, but soak them overnight and it can be eaten in the morning. White rice is definitely a food that should be on everyone's top 10 list. Very few people have allergic reactions to white rice. White rice is very calorie dense and will store for 25 to 30 years. This rice was actually from 1969. It was not stored in ideal conditions. And yet, even after 50 years, that rice was in a form that was edible. The rice did have some insect skeletons in it and it had yellowed over time. I didn't feed it to our family, but we cooked it up and we fed it to our chickens. Even after that 50 years, this rice was edible. It would have been ideal for human consumption had it been stored in a number 10 can with an oxygen absorber. Corn is another grain you might want to consider storing because it has some unique nutritional components. We stored this corn in used peat bottles. We cleaned them out and filled them up. It works really nice and it's a free way to be able to store your grains. It works best if you put an oxygen absorber in each bottle. Dry beans or legumes form the foundation of your survival food supply. Beans are an excellent food, they're very healthy, and they have a 25 to 30 year shelf life. We store a variety of beans because we love the flavor of each one of them and because each one provides its own set of nutrients. Potato flakes are the fast food of your survival food supply. These are very easy to make and can be ready in just a few minutes with boiling water. There are a variety of mashed potatoes out there, but a lot of them have fats and oils in them. These will not store long because the fats and the oils will go rancid. For your survival food supply, potato flakes are going to be the best bet. Or you could do potato dices or potato slices, but they just can't have any added oils. Dehydrated or freeze-dried vegetables are important in your survival food supply. 
My favorites are dried onions, celery, and carrots. The dried onions and celery are great foundational items for my soups, stews, and chilies. The dehydrated carrots provide the needed vitamin A to a survival diet. There is a difference between dehydrated foods and freeze-dried foods. Both of them have a very long shelf life and you can choose whichever you would prefer. However, the dehydrated vegetables take up much less space. One can of dehydrated celery is equal to two or three cans of freeze-dried celery. So just keep that in mind when you are building your supply. It might surprise you that white sugar made our list. Although it doesn't have any nutrients, it does provide calories, which are important. It also provides the ability to make jams and jellies and to preserve food. This sugar was stored in a mylar bag, and you can see after 17 years it had clumped up a little bit, but not bad. These clumps can be broken up and it still dissolves just fine. We encourage you to have 70 pounds per person, which may seem like a lot, but it's really not when you consider all the uses that you can put it to, and it can be a good barter food. Not to mention that sweets can be great comfort foods during challenging times. Honey has significant medicinal properties that make it very valuable in your survival food supply. This honey was stored in a metal can for about 40 years. We took it out of our survival food supply because I noticed that rust was starting to form on the outside of the can. We transferred it into another container and you can see that the honey had crystallized and darkened, becoming richer in storage over time. However, we don't recommend storing honey in a metal container. One of our adult children opened a can of honey that had been in storage and it had black flecks of the metal come out in the honey and all of that was inedible. It's much better to store the honey in glass bottles or in a plastic bucket. Honey will store forever as long as it's in a container that will last. I would store 12 quarts of honey per person unless you aren't storing any other sweetener. And if you aren't, then I would definitely up that amount. Salt is on our list because it is very important for your health. It's important for food preservation and it's not something that you can generally just make on your own. When selecting your salt for storage, make sure that you only use pure forms of salt. They shouldn't have any anti-caking ingredients or anything else added. Salt will store forever, but those added ingredients won't. Salt is hygroscopic and will readily absorb moisture from the surrounding area. I prefer to store my salt in the original containers inside of a five gallon bucket to protect them from moisture. Keeping it inside of that plastic bucket protects it from the outside environment. I could store more salt in this bucket if I didn't store it in the original containers. However, I like to store a variety of salt and those original containers are highly convenient. To me, it's worth taking up a little bit of extra space to have that convenience. In a survival situation, you will be cooking from scratch and preserving your own foods. It's important that you store more salt than you might think you need. We recommend 10 pounds per person for a year supply of salt. And if you've got extra, I'm sure it will be a great barter item. Baking soda made our list because it is useful as a leavening agent for cleaning, for personal hygiene purposes, for medicinal purposes, and it's something you can't produce on your own. Click the card in the corner for a lot more information on the prepper uses of baking soda. We encourage you to have at least seven to 10 pounds per person for a one year supply. Vinegar is a basic ingredient in food preservation and in many common recipes. It is used in pickling and to acidify ingredients when bottling items such as tomatoes and salsa. Apple cider vinegar is well known for its medicinal properties. Vinegar is also an important disinfectant and cleaner. Store vinegar in the right container. Vinegar will store forever in a glass container. However, if you put it in a plastic container, you significantly reduce that shelf life. When we are planning on a 25 to 30 year shelf life, store your vinegar in glass bottles. A safe amount of vinegar in your long-term food supply could be four gallons per household for cleaning purposes and two gallons per person for everything else. Vitamin C is essential to life and health. It tends to be missing from a survival food supply because it's sensitive to heat and available mostly only from fresh fruits and vegetables. Another great reason to grow a survival garden. 
we store ascorbic acid in order to make sure that our need for vitamin C is met. If you store it in the form of a vitamin C tablet, there are binders and fillers that reduce that shelf life. However, ascorbic acid stored in a powdered or crystalline form will store practically forever. You can purchase ascorbic acid in mylar bags or in an eight pound bucket. We'll put a link in the description for a source to purchase ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is not only helpful as a dietary supplement, but it is also used in food preservation. We store one pound per person of ascorbic acid in our year supply. As we mentioned up front, this video is all about the foods we think you should have. However, if you could have one piece of equipment, this would be a good one to have. This country living grain mill provides us the ability to grind grains, which allows me to have my bread. It also can grind beans and corn with a special auger. It's a great tool. The photo on the right shows the electric grain mill that I use on a regular basis, as well as our country living grain mill. So there you have it. Don't delay, start hoarding today. In reality, I kind of don't like the word hoarding because it has somewhat of a negative connotation, but it's exactly what we need to do. We need to have these things stored away so that whatever happens, we are ready and can take care of our families. We invite you to Google the Provident Prepper, top 10 foods to hoard for the end of the world as we know it, for much more information than we could put in this video. Also check out our YouTube channel, Enemies to our Food Storage and Survival Food Supply. These will provide some great guidance. That's our top 10 list of foods that we would want to have going into any kind of a serious event. We encourage you to stock up. Now, of course, if you're able to produce fruits and vegetables on your own land, so much the better. That will stretch your food supply and provide you with a lot of great nutrients. And now for the question of the day. What do you have on your top 10 list? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.